Good day and welcome to our next exciting tutorial on our Tableau custom chart series. Today we are taking a look at the calendar heat maps in, within Tableau. So as you can see, a calendar heat map gives us the opportunity to showcase a um, large number of observations within a specific period of time. Um, and for our example today, we'll also be using a period of one year to look at. The data, however, which we are using are accidents within the UK during the 2015 calendar year. We will be focusing only on the date field. Um, however, within this file, there is a lot of information which you can also play around with. And let's get started. We'll start off with a new Tableau project where we are connecting via the text file parameter. We'll be using the CSV as supplied. And this file is also available on the Super Data Science website where you can get it from. All right, as you can see, here are all the fields we're working with. Um, most importantly, as I mentioned before, we are using the date field only. And just to confirm, it is within a date format. Perfect. We can continue to the, to the sheet. Now, to build the skeleton, we will be using the date field in the column shell. And we will be selecting um, the weekday from the discrete measures, as we would like to see it from a Monday to a Sunday. Next, we would like to see the different weeks. So again, we'd be using the date field and putting that in rows. But again, selecting the week numbers to give us a view of all of the months. Now we can check the dates and by dropping it into the text field and just selecting the specific day. And you can see January runs from the 1st right through to the 31st with the 1st of February starting over there. But we will leave it out of the equation for now. As mentioned, We'll be using the number of records as our metric, or the number of accidents, which is equal to the number of records. And we can drop that into the color shell. And immediately you can see our visualization is taking shape. We would, however, like to change the color immediately. So let's go to edit colors. And what I think works well for this specific one is the orange blue diverging color set. But with the, we would like to have the orange, obviously, with the more observations. So we can just click reversed over there and hit OK. There we go. You can immediately see that Saturdays and Sundays do not seem to have as many accidents. But um, yeah, this is our visualiz visualization thus far. Let's immediately add back our day number by taking the date column and adding on the label shell. Um, we'll change this obviously to the discrete day measure and changing our chart type back to square as we would like to see it like this. Perfect. We can immediately start with some of the formatting by actually changing the font size. Um, let's make this a six, nice and small to fit in and make sure it's left aligned. And also not only left aligned, but also top. There we go. This is all great and well. It would however be much better if we could see this in a grid um, and have each month separate. The way we'll do that is we'll create a calculated field by, called the column index. This way we can ensure which month goes into which column, and obviously starting off with the month of January. Now we'll use a normal case statement for this, so case the month function of the date that we're working with. Now, if that is a one, which obviously means January, then we put a one into the value. Next, we will say for February, we'll do the same. When it's a two, then we output a two. And the same for March, we need to three, we output to a three. So that will make sure that we've got them in individual columns. Now we need to continue this pattern. Um, I'll just copy and paste this. We need to continue this pattern for the rest of the month. So we would be saying when it's April, it needs to go into the first column, um, May into the next, and June in the next. And we will just copy, keep on copying and pasting this and replacing the month numbers to make sure they go into the correct columns. And don't forget to end it on, off with an end statement. All right, we can see our, valid, our calculation is valid. We will hit apply or end OK. And then just look for our newly created column index, move that to the dimensions, and then also move it into our column shelf. Now, We'll place it before our weekday as we got it at the moment to make sure that the months run across. There we go. Next, we want to collapse these months 
and so we can see them actually next to each other and not cascading down and for that we'll create a row index again we'll be creating a calculated field and um, we'll call this the row index now for this one specifically we'll be using a level of detail expression it works quite well in this case and um, what I'll be doing is I will just type out the actual um, formula that we'll be using and then I'll explain to you exactly what, um, what will be how this works so if you just give me a second we will I'll explain it to you in the meantime a gentle reminder to subscribe to the super data science YouTube channel for more on the custom chart series and further exciting content and there we go there is our statement so what we're doing in essence is we're taking the weak number of the visualization and we are subtracting the minimum weak number from the month level so let's hit ok and then we can also just move this into dimensions and if we have our dimensions we will actually just replace the week date it almost looks like we messed it up now but this is still in line with how it should be the way we can now break this up properly is to again use the date field and drag into rows and select the quarter there we go so now you can see we've got the month of January February and March next to each other and all the months further running down let's do some cleanup and make this look a bit better all right so we'll collapse that we can hide the headers over here even the headers of this um, can show, hide the header there and also hide the field labels over there right that looks much better I'll just move this to the left side as well next we can just also resize it slightly use the maximum space available at the bottom here and let's just bring it all into the one frame over here so we bring just bring it in slightly we will resize this a couple of times just at the end as well but for now, we can work with it as it is. All right, first thing we'll do is we'll work on the borders. So we just right click on the chart and say format. We will go firstly into the borders over here and for rows on the row divider, we want to create a thick white line between the months. To, so to separate them properly, as you can see, and the same with columns as well. So we'll choose the column divider pane, thick white line to separate the months. That looks great. Let's even separate the, each individual days a little bit as well. So for that, we go to the default of columns and the cell line over there and just change it to white. And the same with the row, change the line color to white. There we go. That looks excellent. We can just collapse that again and we can look at our masterpiece. Let's also format the heading over here. So we right click and use the actual short abbreviated na name of the, of the day. As you can see, MON instead of the full one, and also just change the size. We'll make that in a six again to make it nice and small, and just bold it as well. There we go. Um, we can just actually hide that as well and change the heading of our sheet. And we can call this UK Vehicle Accidents, and this was for 2015. All right, and we can hit apply. There we go. And that's about it. I am quite interested to understand why there are certain Mondays um, that have a very low accident rate as well as you can see this period in December. I already have some sort of idea but um, what we could do as a little bonus here is just add in the public holidays to see how that has affected the accident rate. What we'll do is we'll go back to our data source and we'll just collect, could, uh, click back onto our um, Excel file. You can see we've got the UK public holidays in Excel this is also available on the Superdata Science website. So we'll select the UK public holidays and it's straightforward, just the date as well as a holiday name on there. Right, um, for this, we will, won't be doing a join. Um, I will be just be selecting a um, data blending for this exercise. I just think it's nice and easy and straightforward to do it here. Um, and how we'll be doing that is let's go into our data source. Oh, sorry, let's go into our data source over there. And firstly check, you can see it's already picking up that there's some sort of relationship there, but let's just check that relationship by going to the data, 
menu edit relationships and we can see it's already selected quite a number of different ones um, let's just clear it out let's go first of all click on uh, <laughs> custom and then let's remove all of these that it's pre-populated you can see it's already our primary data source is obviously the accidents sheet and then also our public holidays being the secondary so we'll be using just straightforward the date columns from both and we can hit OK and we just picked it up and we can hit OK once again. Let's make sure that we actually link these two fields and it's as straightforward as in us just taking the holiday name and throwing it on top of the label and let's just hide that again and you can see now we've got the actual public holidays put on top of it and as suspected the days where we were expecting a larger number of um, accidents if you can say that is basically on there was public holidays and also obviously over the christmas period of time now to get the names displaying properly you just have to play around with the sizing a little bit to get them properly shown we'll just use the maximum space we can and even hide this a little bit more uh, let's just drag that out there there we go all of them fit in nicely and you can see where all of the public holidays are all right, and that concludes our tutorial for today. Um, thank you very much for joining. Um, it was fun having you around. Remember to also subscribe to our YouTube channel to ensure that you don't miss out on some further exciting tutorials coming up. Until next time.